Hello, welcome to the Mad Batter channel. My name's Chris. Well, I finally succumbed. I had been avoiding generative fill and all the other new AI features in the Photoshop beta, preferring to wait until Adobe considered they were developed well enough to put in the main version of Photoshop. But having seen all the things you can do with generative fill on YouTube videos, I have decided to have a go myself. So I started to play with generative fill and will post some ideas on how to use it. The first thing I've noticed is that when people use generative fill, they choose one of the three variations given by Photoshop. But sometimes you may want to use a bit of say variation one and a different bit of variation two. Well, this first video shows how you can combine two or more generative fill versions in the same image. So to demonstrate the principles and the practice, I'll start with what I might call an artificial image and then switch to a practical image, which will then apply the principles to. So here we are with a completely blank image, just a background layer. I'll make a selection with the marquee tool and use generative fill and put in a prompt such as bright color and click generate I think my internet connection must be a bit slow today So there we have variation one, variation two, and variation three. To give us a bit more choice, I'll click generate again, and it'll give us another three variations based on the same prompt. So now we have six variations. That one's not very colorful, but let's say you wanted something slightly different. Well, you can combine these variations. So let's bring up the uh, layers panel. Bring it down here. Now, you, let's say you want this one as your background. Now, there's absolutely nothing to stop you from duplicating this layer by pressing com Control or Command J. And all the variations are still available to you. So now let's say we'll pick uh, this one. So now we have two variations in, in, the, in the image. And all we need to do is to manipulate the um, mask to combine what shows. So if we get our brush, and what we want to do is to remove some of this to reveal the background. So make sure we're on the mask We'll have, let's say, a fairly soft brush. We'll make it a bit smaller. Maybe not that small. Okay. And then all we need to do is paint on the mask to hide some of the top generative fill like that. So there we've combined two ver versions of the generative fill. Um, there's absolutely no reason why we can't do a third, so Control or Command J. Um, let's have this one. Now of course that's got the same mask as the layer below it, so we need to go in and play with this mask again. So let's there we are. So now we've combined three. So hold the Alt key. That's the original. That's the first generative fill version we used, and that's the second with a smaller bit showing, and that's the third with even less showing, simply by adjusting the mass. 
Of course, each time you duplicate the layer, you'll get the same mask as the layer you're duplicating. So that's the principle of how we can combine one or more, two or more variations on the generative fill into the same image. Now we'll look at a practical example. So here we are in Photoshop Beta. And we're going to use this image. And what I want to do is to remove this fallen tree with all the detail behind it, or potentially behind it. This, of course, would be virtually impossible using standard tools like cloning and content-aware fill. I've also created the gen fill layers. This is the first one, and then I duplicated it with Control J. And just to show what the um, selection was, I'll load the selection I used. So there you can see, if I press the Q key for quick mask, that's the selection going around the outside of the tree. So I'll deselect. And I should say that in creating the gen generative fill layer, I didn't use any prompt in the dialog box, but just left Photoshop to its own devices. And if we open the properties panel, you'll see that we have the three variations as usual. So that's the first, it got rid of the tree, but put these three rocks in and made a bit of a mess of that. The second one didn't remove the tree at all, so that's not very good. And the third one gave a cleaner outline at the back and better houses here, but this is not very good here. So we want to combine the best of these, of the first and the third gen fill variations. <coughs> So this is the first variation. I'll leave that as it is, and then we'll activate the duplicate gen fill layer, and I'll switch to the third variation. Now we need to amend the mask, so highlight the mask. What we want to do is to get rid of this here. So we'll get a black brush, paint on the mask, paint over all this to bring in the, uh, the better buildings in the background. Like that. Now, if we want, we could also remove some of the third variation to bring in this rock here. I think we need to make our brush a little harder to get the right sort of edge. Paint that with white to repair that. And there we are. So if I go back to the original, hold the Alt key, press on there, that's the original image. That gets rid of the tree, but puts in these additional rocks, and makes a bit of a mess of this building here. And then the third one puts back the better buildings here, a better beach here, and the second and third rocks have been removed, but we've left the first one, so that's the first variation, and that's the second variation. So we've gone from that to that, which I think is pretty remarkable, really, and in doing so, we've used two, vari two of the Genfield variations in the same image. And of course, we can now flatten the image and export it as a JPEG or whatever. So hopefully all this makes sense and shows that you don't need to choose the least bad option from the various generative fill variations. You can choose bits of as many variations as you want.
And just to show what can be achieved with generative fill, here's a quite complex edit which involves 11 generative fill layers and a cloned layer. This is actually from New Zealand. This is Mount Taranaki near um, New Plymouth or Stratford. And this is the image I've taken. And then, as you can see, going up, I used lots of different generative fill layers. That's got rid of all the fence posts. And added some storm clouds and removed the first house and that's the second variation to improve the hedge so this is the same gen fill layer but it's used a better version of the hedge let's got rid of the next one let's got rid of the Pipe some stuff down the front here. And this is a different variation of that to improve the fence. Then electric poles have gone on the left and then a clone layer to put in some more hedge. So I think you'll agree that's uh, quite a change from the original which looks semi-rural to this which looks completely rural all done with gen fill and in some some of the gen fill layers we've used different variations hopefully you found this useful if you have perhaps you could give the video a like and consider subscribing i'll post some more videos as and when i discover new techniques or ideas in the meantime thanks for watching